everyone. Welcome back to the GRE How To channel, where we make studying for the GRE a whole lot more tolerable. So we're back on another travel edition of the GRE How To series, which means we're going to do quick and dirty, very few edits. But what's most important is that we get the information to you. So I hope you enjoy this wonderful greenery in Kona, Hawaii. All right, I'm super excited about this one because it comes at the request of our viewers. Today, we're going to be talking about how to study for the GRE in less than a month. I did a lot of research for this and I wanted to put together the best resources so that you can really structure and target your study time so that you can do the absolute best you can in such a limited time frame. Let's get started. So when it comes to studying for the GRE in less than a month, it just means that you have to put your head down and grind. There's no shortcuts for this. You're going to be spending a lot of time trying to do as much as you can so that you can get the best score that you can with such a, a limited amount of time to study. But don't worry, that means you can do this. It just means, you know, maybe saying no to going out to dinner with some people, maybe spending a lot more time with your head down in the books, but it's only only a few weeks, so I know that you can do it. So you can do it, let's do it. All right, so day one of your GRE abridged study journey revolves around taking a practice test. You wanna take the full length and you wanna get a sense of how you are doing and what your baseline is. So after you take the test, keep in mind that you probably won't get a score for your AWA, so that's okay. Um, what you're really going to focus on is your performance on the verbal and math portions. For this, most of the options that I've given you for the free Jerry practice tests, if you haven't seen it yet, I will put the video in the cards. Um, they all have an interface that allow you to see what you did right, what you did wrong, how long it took you for those problems, and then the kind of uh, category it falls under. This is critical because the step two of your day one um, to-do list is to analyze your performance. When you analyze your performance, I want you to look at three things. First, the ones that you got wrong, and not only the questions itself, but also the kinds of questions they are. So those are the two things so that you can keep in mind those things. The third thing I want you to keep track of is how long it took you to take some of the problems. So when it comes to the questions that took you the longest to get the answer, whether you got it correct or wrong, I want you to get a sense of those because you're going to need to ramp up your speed. You know, taking the test is not only a function of your ability to regurgitate, reg, reg, regurgitate the concepts that you're being tested on, but also your ability to manage your time. So when you get a sense of the questions that you're getting wrong and the questions that you're going that you take the longest time doing those are going to be the kinds of questions that you're going to focus on and tailor your study schedule now that you're equipped with the patterns from analyzing your test performance i want you to prioritize the ones that you had the most difficult time going through and match them with the most commonly tested concepts on the gre so what are the most commonly tested concepts for the GRE? Well, it's much easier to answer this question for the math portion, so I'll start there. I came across a really great article from Kaplan that talks about the latest and greatest as of 2017 of the most commonly tested concepts of the GRE. I'll put the link in the description below, and for right now, I will cover the top five. First is number properties. Number properties are critical for the GRE. And lucky for you, we have a number properties video, which I will also put in the cards. Put both hands up because I don't know which side I have to practice. Anyway, um, number properties are critical because there are just so many things that you can do when it comes to understanding how a number should come out based on the properties of those numbers. So. I highly, highly recommend that you work on number properties if that is one of the categories that you found the most difficulty with. 
Second is plain geometry. Geometry is something you just can't get away from, which is something that I'm working on right now in my study journey. Um, make sure that you have the concepts of geometry together when it comes to working with circles, polygons, which include triangles, um, you know, squares, you know, coordinates. Those geometrical concepts are plentiful in the land of GRE. So if you had the most difficulty working on geometry, make that a priority. Now, the third are word problems. So uh, so a lot of times people have trouble conceptualizing word problems. If that is you, make sure that you're spending the time trying to get better and faster at those kinds of problems. The fourth most tested concept are rates and work. So think of a problem like Martha takes eight hours to do something and John takes 18 hours to do something. How long uh, will it take for them to do something together? Um, if those are hard for you to wrap your brain around, make sure you prioritize working on those. And lastly, probability. And probability also sometimes has to do with common combinatorics and permutations. And lucky for you, we have a couple of videos on that already. I'll put those in the cards. These are just the top five. And I mean, you want to make sure that you prioritize the most common. So to get ready for it, I have to challenge you to memorize 150 of the most common GRE vocabulary words each week. And not only that, as time goes by, it's important to review the words from the previous week so that you can really improve your recall for the test. So that means that you are going to be getting that repertoire down, memorizing those words. And to help you, I put a link to the common GRE words to memorize in the description below. So we spent the most time on the math concepts because that is the most nuanced for your preparation. When it comes to preparing for the verbal section, it all hinges on memorizing vocabulary words because you really need great vocabulary for both the text completions and the sentence equivalents. So I know the five pound book of GRE problems is gigantic and it's really hard to navigate that. So what I did for you is I put the top 10 most commonly tested topics for the math section in the description below and matched it with the corresponding chapters of the Manhattan five pound book of GRE practice problems. So that's gonna be helpful for you to know which chapters to go over each week as you try to put together your study plan. I highly recommend that you work on the most difficult categories first so that you have more time to actually practice with those as you grow in your capabilities. So what's really important that you do after you've structured your study plan is that you take a test after each week of your study journey. What's also critical is that you continue doing that analysis that I talked about on day one throughout each week of your journey. That way, when you look at the problems that you're still having the most difficulty with, you can reformat your study plan to make sure that you're tackling the most difficult and most commonly tested aspects of the test. If you find that you've gone through all of the most relevant practice problems in the Manhattan book, then I highly recommend you start looking for other resources. There are some free ones that I will link in the description below. And there's also Magoosh, which I do recommend. As you know by now, this is not a sponsored series or anything like that. I just try to find out the most useful, hopefully free or low cost ways to get ready for this test. I mean, when I think about it, some people don't even have enough money to cover the actual test. So it's really important to me to find the lowest cost possible for us to all do well on the GRE. It's a nice way to lower the playing field. That said, um, Magoosh is, I think they have a $129 plan for just one month. Um, I would actually go on some coupon sites to see if you can try to find a coupon code to get it even cheaper because that's just how I roll. But they have a bank of practice questions that can help you as you are trying to ramp up on your study journey. 
All right, so those are your tips on how to structure and target your studying for less than a month. If you have any more questions, please put them in the comments below. And this was a viewer request, so I'd love for you to keep them coming so that I have a greater sense of the kinds of videos that you want to see, because that's what's important to me. Not only is it important that I study for the GRE, but it's also important that what I'm doing is helping you as well. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I can't wait to see you next time.